In this video, we will be learning about graphing the logarithmic function, and then talking about how um, when you make changes in the equation, how it will affect the graph, how it might shift the graph down or to the right, to the left, um, it might cause the graph to shrink or to stretch or even reflect in the x-axis. So we will first graph um, a basic logarithmic function. This one has base 2. So a quick review on how to graph the logarithmic function and then we're going to talk about how what happens when we make changes in the equation and how um, the changes will result in translation of the graph. Alright, so we are going to make an x-y table. And a couple things I want you to remember is <clears throat> the logarithmic function is the inverse function of the exponential function. So exponential function is, this would be like y equals 2 to the power of x. And then since it's the inverse function, we switch x and y. So it's actually, we're going to think about it as 2 to the power of y equals x. And then we're going to pick values for y and solve for x. And I'm going to pick the values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Alright, so when I plug these in, I'll have 2 to the power of negative 2, which is equal to 1 over 2 squared, which is one-fourth. Then when you plug in negative one, two to the power of negative one is one over two to the first, which is one-half. When you plug in zero, anything to the power of zero is one. Um, when you plug in one, two to the first power is two. 2 squared is 4, and 2 to the third is 8. So now that I have those points, I can plot them on my graph. Alright, so I have the point over 1 fourth down 2, over 1 half down 1, over 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and then 8, 3. And remember the y-axis is the asymptote, so I'll get really close to the y-axis but never cross it. And then my graph looks like this. So now we're going to work with, um, we're going to make changes in this equation and we're going to see how changes in the equation will affect the graph. Alright, so here I have a chart um, that you might want to refer to. Um, we've got, here are the different manipulations to the equation that result in these different types of translations in the graph. So if you have a coefficient in front of the logarithm, it might stretch it, shrink it, or reflect it over the x-axis depending on the value of a. If it's greater than 1, it will stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, it will shrink. And if it's negative, it will reflect over the x-axis. And then the other translations is basically just moving up, down, right, or left. If you are adding or subtracting inside these parentheses, so you're adding or subtracting from the variable x, it will move it to the right or to the left. And it's actually a little bit different than what you might think. If you are subtracting, it moves right. If you're adding, it moves left. And then the vertical translations, moving it up or down. This is, would be after the logarithm, you are, after you evaluate the logarithm, if you add or subtract a value at the end, if you add, it moves up. If you subtract, it moves down. And then the combination is just that you can have a combination of any of these translations. All right, so here we have um, the graph that we've just created, just the uh, logarithm with base 2 of x, and I highlighted uh, four key points um, on the graph. Alright, so two different changes um, in the equation. 
Here we're subtracting 4 inside these parentheses, so that is going to result in a horizontal translation moving the graph right four units. So if you just highlight key points, you can just move each of those points to the right four. So we connect them, and I want you to think about the asymptote. It, uh, the asymptote was at zero, and that is also moving one, two, three, four. The asymptote is now at x equals four, so my graph will get very close to this line, but never cross it. All right, and then I have uh, x plus five inside parentheses, and that's going to result in a left translation, five units. So my asymptote will be at negative five, and then these original points on the original graph here, I'm just going to move left five points. So now I have two translations of my original graph. Now we have two equations that will, will result in a vertical translation. So once again, I have the original graph log with base 2. And this time, um, we are adding and subtracting numbers not to the variable x, but we're um, doing it after you evaluate the logarithm. So it says if you evaluate the logarithm and then add 6 or subtract 8 at the end, and it will result in a vertical translation um, where when you add, you will have a vertical translation going up. And then when you subtract, you have a vertical translation going down. So just like before, all we have to do is I've highlighted these main points and we just have to translate them. So for the first one, if we want to translate log base 2x plus 6, just move all of your points up 6. And when you do a vertical translation, the asymptote does not change. It stays the same. All right, and then if we want to do the second equation where we're subtracting 8, we just have to move all of our points down 8. And then connect, and we have our vertical translations of the original function. For our last example, um, I've changed the equation by adding a coefficient, a multiplier in front. And since the absolute value of negative 3 is greater than 1, it's going to result in like a stretch of the graph. But then um, because negative 3 is less than 0 because it's negative, it's going to result in a reflection. To get so to get the points, I want you to think about here's the original points that we got for the original graph. Um, so we plug in x values and we get y values. Um, and the only thing that we're uh, doing differently is that we're multiplying by negative 3. So really, we plug in the same x values and it's like we're getting the same y values, we just need to multiply them by negative 3. So if we multiply all of our original y values by negative 3, we will get our new points. So, so we'll have positive 6 and positive 3. We still have 0, negative 3, negative 6, and negative 9. So if we graph those points, as you can see, we will, we will result in a graph that is stretched and reflected across the x-axis. So all you have to remember in this lesson is if you can graph a basic logarithm, then you can graph any manipulation to that equation by thinking about translations.